Hi, I'm here at the Rapid Tech uh, stand, and we've got Mark and uh, Hi, Dave. Yeah, and who's um, been through various companies over the years. <laughs> so I got Rapid Tech right, um, and we're taking a look at uh, some Unity um, stuff here because you're the only Australian distributor for Unity? That's correct. There's two parts of their business. The meter side, which there's a number of distributors, but the instrument side, we're exclusive. Because Unity are up and coming in higher end stuff, because most people know Unity for like low end multimeters, and so yep. they've got that low end uh, rep, but um, they've got some higher end stuff like this uh, Spectrum Analyzer, but you said that this is a three gig one. Yeah, uh, so there's a 1.5 gig range, the 1000 series, the 3000 series goes up to 3.6. Um, and there's now a, another series that's coming up to 26 gig. 26 so they're gigs. following that sort of uh, importation. They're doing some of their uh, own uh, ASICs in their new scope, as an example, the, the 7000 series. They're using their own chips. Um, so that's going to go up to six gigs. Um, so they're, they're really putting a lot, of, yeah. a lot of money and effort into R&D. That's so, and uh, I just got the new um, five thousand dollar four channel. Uh, the UTG nine thousand. Yeah. So that's a four channel arbitrary gen. waveform generator. Yeah. And, um, and there's no competition for that, by the looks of it. No, that I can see. So no, absolutely. You don't have one of those here, because uh, <laughs> not at the moment. Right. So I might be the only one in the country with one. We'll come uh, to you if we need it. <laughs> okay. Excellent. So how? What is the challenge with um, selling? Trying to sell the Unity brand into the professional uh, market? Because I would, I would consider that quite a challenge considering the competitors like uh, Rigol and Siglin these days. Look, I think it's fair to say Unity is the number three coming up. You know, Rigol was there first, Siglin was following, and Unity spending a lot of time and effort and money on the instruments portfolio. And you're absolutely right. You know, it is a challenge when things are being purely low cost but I think the performance is starting to speak for itself and moving from that hobbyist to that uh, you know, service bench, R&D, moving up that food chain basically. And I think the, the performance starts to speak for itself. Um, and it does offer great value because they realize there are those other brands that they need to compete with. And to start with, really, you know, price is probably the key factor that yes. can make a difference. Um, I think it's great that we get the support from Unity as being exclusive because we put a lot of time and effort into the consultative cell and making sure people are getting what they actually need. Um, and you can't do that when there's you know, other channel partners willing to undercut you because they don't have that bricks and mortar face-to-face -face, uh, side of things. So I think um, that's a really key thing that enables us to put more time and effort into those professional um, uh, customers and basically have demo equipment to be able for them to trial them first. So it's actually, you know, investing in that. They trial it, they can see that it works in their application and that gives them confidence. And that's really what the key is for the professional sales is it's got to be, they've got to be confident that it's going to have the performance and the value. Got it. So what do you say when people like, uh, they're after a latest spectrum analyzer and you go, oh, I've got this UNI-T unit and they go, huh? UNI-T? <laughs> like, how do you <laughs> sell them? Because um, it still looks, I've got to admit, it still, oh, that one's actually better than the uh, signal generator, but I think the signal generator, they need a better industrial designer because it still kind of looks low endish. Right. But yes, how do you sell it with the likes of, although Rigol ones are pretty, uh, not terrific in the um, looks department either. They don't look that professional, but... <laughs> look, I, I think it, it's, it's important to have both, yep. but I think the insides and the performance... Is what matters. People yeah. are going, going to go for that first, yep. and you know, if the plastic looks a little bit on the cheap <laughs> side, you know, that's something to get over to start with, but you're absolutely right. right. It's yep. that industrial design, look but it's got, have, yep. I, it's got to have... It's got to have the... The, the actual performance is yes. more important than the actual outside. And then you it say, is. you know what? When moving up the, faith, the, the food chain, people expect more, and that will come right. in the future. So we've got a new 26 gig spectrum analyzer. Yep, that's um, in the pipeline. Yep. What's um, their highest bandwidth scope? 
Uh, be six gigahertz. Six the gig. new the new seven thousand. Um, and, and they're running their own front end. They design their own yep. front end AC. Is it a front end AC? Yeah, it's a it's a custom uh, uh, IC for their that particular model. And again, it's moving up that food chain, being more reliant on your own developments. Um, and you know, it, it's it's a good entry level product at the moment. But you know, it's not going to stay at that entry level. They'll always have something. Um, but then they're moving up the food chain in frequency, uh, obviously for the spectrum analyzers and the scopes and the function generators, as you've seen with the 9000 series. Um, of course. So are they trying to undercut Rigol and Siglent, or is that not their plan? Are they, they plan to compete on, like undercut them or similar price level? Look, I, I think it will be slightly lower uh, to start with. If you want to break into a market, you've got to have some benefit for people to start to consider it and so you know I don't think there's going to be any uh, dramatic right. price difference. Yeah, it's not going to harm. <laughs> yeah exactly um, you know and that is um, in that as you move away from the hobbies to the professional you've got to set that expectation that it is going to be good value you know as put up there it's budget friendly. Oh budget friendly okay. there you go there's their uh, there's okay. the performance and value uh, that's the portfolio there yep. All the oh, different they've things got they battery have. testers too. I didn't know they had battery. Where's the battery tester? We got so one some of these products here are, are yep. not CE listed, um, ah. but all the products are going through that over the next sort of 12 or 6 to 18 months. So we've got that up there as an example of what's in the portfolio because it is very diverse, and that's one of the key things is maybe you've you know, you bought in a meter from them. Yep. But you didn't know they did high pot testers or spectrum analyzers. I didn't know they did AC power sources. I'd, well, be, I'd, I'd be interested in the yep. AC power source. So, Once again, you haven't got one because uh, it's, it's not C. Lines. But they're going right. through that process, yep. and that again, you know, they realise what they need to do. The big market has been the domestic Chinese market. That's been fine. They need to sort of grow the size of the pie, if you like, like most other companies, manufacturers. Um, and they've been involved in R&D and manufacturing for 30 odd years, so it's not it's not a new brand. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Did yeah. they have another name before that, or that was no? no, it was no. Always... But it was focused on the meters and the new domestic meter. market. Yep. Yeah. Okay. What else are you guys um, selling here? Look, we have a wide range of different products, but maybe over here the um, pendulum is uh, really well known in the frequency counter and the uh, yes. reference standards. Um, so this is a company they bought, Detectus, it's an EMC scanner. So you have the head here that will do X and Y and Z, but also rotates, so it's a four-dimensional um, uh, scanner. It uses a laser distance meter, so you can actually profile the topography oh, of the board. Oh, wow. Okay. So if you've got some big electrolytics, yep. it'll go over that, then go down onto the board, onto the surface mounts, and then you can do the scan for the EMC side of it. Right. Um, and then you get the basically the heat map. You, you, you can get the RF heat map of it. Yep. 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 Very impressive. And then th this one here, the yep. CNT 104. I really like the look of that. That's yep. very schmick. Yep. This is uh, five input channels, but you can measure four of them at the same time. Right. Gap free. It's unique in the industry again. Um, Terrific stuff. Yep. Once again, it's not something that the average person wants. That's a real niche product for a niche. It, it, market, it can be, it? but right. we're seeing applications in utilities because people are wanting to compare, uh, say, 10 megahertz references. Yep. So you can do histograms, you can do plots yep. over time. Of course. Um, yep. And you know that stability of those references is really, really important. Um, so that's one of the key things that a lot of calibration labs, uh, a lot of uh, production and R&D where you need multiple counters, you can do this with one counter. So, you know, sometimes you see things and I'm the same, you think, oh, that's very niche. But then when you start looking at the applications, you go, you know, it's, it's, it's not that... It, Interesting. Niche as I thought it might yep. be. So. Okay. And you're doing Keysight as well. Yes, we've got a full menu today, ladies full and gentlemen. Menu, yes, um, yeah, in, including the gorgeous eight channel um, EXR series. The EXR uh, series, yeah, uh, available impressive. from 500 megahertz to 6 gigahertz. Yep. Uh, four or eight channels uh, yes. of analog input plus the 16 yeah. digital channels. Look at them all, count them. Count yep. them. Eight. 
Fantastic. Uh, it's a real rainbow down there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, would, uh, yeah. you don't have enough colours to uh, display on screen. <laughs> Crazy. And one of the nice things with the, uh, the Keysight oscilloscopes as an example is you know, they come with demo waveforms. So yes. one of the key yeah, things, yeah, is if you've them. got new engineers or somebody's uh, not familiar with uh, I squared C, you can pull up the demo signal, you can play around with it, you, you know what it is, and there'll be tutorials on what you do here, say as an example with the waveform, and yep. then add a histogram, add trending or whatever, you learn on that, test signal and then you can go on your own design and you're far far more familiar with it and you get much better sort of value out of the instrument so and, and that's available in those and it's 35 percent off folks yeah, yeah. Oh, crazy up to 35 percent off yeah. <laughs> save <laughs> save thousand dollars yeah. or something yeah. <laughs> franco cozzo for those that are in melbourne uh, smart oh, venture yes, essentials the, uh, basic series yeah so yep. really focused yeah, you, for the the hobbies but the entry level and the, a lot of teaching uh, oh with, yeah, I was going to say, it would all be that. for uni labs and yep. TAFE labs and yep. stuff like that. Absolutely. Yep. No, terrific. Right, thank you very much, Mark. Thank you, Dave. Appreciate it.